What's up guys, it's Mikko Chris, coming at you again from Detroit. Hey, today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite techniques to, uh, to catch some walleye. We're gonna talk about crawler harnesses and how to make them. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup. What I'm gonna run through is a brief overview of everything you're gonna need. Um, we're gonna talk about specifics and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you kind of how we, we store them and some quick change options uh, to get you guys all set up for fishing. So as always guys, if you like this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Then if you want to see more future content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. All right guys, so one of the main key components of uh, crawler harnesses is your line. I like a good Seeger um, fluorocarbon. I go with the 20 pound. I've also used some Gamma. Um, they actually have some very specific lines for leaders. Uh, you can go in that 15 to 20 range. Uh, these walleye on the Detroit and St. Clair rivers are uh, a little bit lighter, but if you're going out on say Lake Erie or uh, Lake Michigan and you may get into some bigger walleye, you might wanna bump it up to this, uh, this 20 pound or even 25 pound. Next thing is your hook selection. Uh, pay attention to your state and your state laws. Uh, some state laws will only let you run one hook. Um, some will let you run two, but no trebles. Uh, some will let you run a treble and a front hook. So we're gonna kind of go through all those different options and then we'll go through um, bead selection and we'll walk through what type of clevis you need uh, to go ahead and affix your uh, blade to your crawler harness. And then finally we'll go up to the swivel and we'll put it all together so that way you guys can tie these up and get out there and get fishing. So the first thing uh, is that what we're gonna do is it depends on where you're fishing at, uh, but for the most part, I like to run about a four to six uh, foot leader. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically go ahead and uh, use my table as a measurement. It's about a 46 inch table uh, for you guys for reference. So I'll go ahead, I'll rough cut that, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and just clip it with some uh, fingernail clippers that I have laying around. So from here, we're gonna get into our hooks and how you tie them. All right, so for you guys that are only allowed to run one hook or only wanna run one hook, um, I'd recommend something like this, the uh, size two Eagle Claws. Uh, it's a general purpose offset shank hook. Uh, really, really sharp. It's got the, uh, the L1 needle point to it. Uh, and again, it's in a size two. Go ahead and run a polymer knot. There's many tutorials out there on how to do it. Uh, but basically you're going to feed it through and then you're going to double over. You're going to pull down on your tag end and you're going to come across and do an overhand knot. Uh, once you do that overhand knot, you're basically going to pull the, the loop through and give it a little bit of tightness. All right, so it's like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to loop the hook back through this loop that you just made, all right? And you're gonna pull down on it. Give it a little bit of spit, because it's fluorocarbon, and uh, you don't want any friction to hurt your line strength, all right? Then you're gonna give it a little bit of a pull here. Use your teeth, pull it through here, and then you got that nice double loop knot. And then you just go ahead and uh, tie your tag in your one hook setup. All right, so here's the second option, guys. Uh, basically, we have two different size hooks here. I have the same size twos, the Eagle Claws, and I have a size four VMC. A lot of guys, if they're gonna run a double hook, will run a smaller hook, like a size four at the end. Um, and, and keep in mind, guys, whatever personal preference you guys wanna use with hooks, um, the brand or the size, um, by all means, go ahead. Uh, I just found that this is what I like. So with a, a double hook setup, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, do the polymer knot at the end. So there you have your polymer knot. Now you're gonna take this long edge of your leader, right? And you're gonna take your uh, front hook, right? Whatever you choose for it and you're gonna make sure that the hook is down like this, all right? So you want your hook down and you wanna go through the eye hook this way, all right? You're gonna pull it down to your desired length. 
Now, I run a lot of night crawler setups, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this about two and a half to three inches um, from the end of one hook to the other, all right? So right about there is where I wanna tie mine. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna snell this front hook. So to do that, I'm gonna fold this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wrap this. I'm gonna wrap this uh, seven, eight times. Again, personal preference, All right? And then you're gonna take this long line back through, and this time you're gonna run it through the same way, all right? Again, and you're gonna pull that long line, all right? Still keeping a decent grip on your tagging, all right? And you're just gonna give that a nice little pull. All right, and then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna cut my tag end off my polymer knot on the rear, making sure that I don't cut my main line. All right. And then what you're gonna end up with is a setup, just like that. All right guys, so this time what I'm gonna do is my preferred setup. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run one of these size two up front, and I'm gonna run a size six uh, Eagle Claw in the rear. Uh, these are only a two um, times strong treble. That way, if I do snag up, I can uh, I can always pull it out. And these uh, these hooks are are really soft and they'll bend out pretty easy. So at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run my polymer knot um, at the end of this treble hook. And guys, this is fluorocarbon, so you do kind of want to wet this a little bit when you're tying it. It is a good practice to get into. All right, so there again, I have my polymer knot tied on my treble. Uh, this time I'll go ahead and I will remove that tag end uh, pretty close. All right, and I'm gonna straighten this out. So I'm gonna run this Eagle Claw again with the, uh, the shank like this, and I'm gonna put it up through, all right? I'm gonna bring it all the way down. I'm gonna get my desired length. Here, my desired length is going to be about the same. Again, I'm still running night crawlers with this thing. So anywhere from two to three inches, um, I find to be a, a pretty effective way to tie these things. So we're going to go ahead and snell it again. Um, and we're just going to go that seven to eight times around. We're going to grab that tag in. We're going to bring the top of that again back down through. All right. And we're just going to pull it. We're going to pull this nice and tight making sure we don't hook ourselves with that treble hook in the back. Uh, we're gonna wrap our fingers around and give it a nice little pull. So there you go, guys. You have a treble hook with a snelled number two uh, up above it, two to three inches apart. All right, and now we'll go on to the bead selection and clevis selection as well. All right, guys, so here's a couple of bead boxes that I have. Size is really going to be determined by what type of spoons you're trying to run or blades, um, what type of clevis you guys are running, and how big your gap needs to be. Um, so usually what I do is a six to eight bead setup. These are plastic beads. They run a little bit bigger, um, the ones that I have, and these are some glass faceted beads. Guys, you want to get yourself some good glass faceted beads. Um, they really go ahead and when they, when they bounce, they clink together really good. Um, and they attract those fish from a long ways away. And then what we'll talk about here is some of the clevises. Uh, I have a quick change uh, fish clevis that's plastic. I have a solid state one that you cannot change the blades on once you put it on. Ever since I found these Dutch forts, these are what I run. Uh, they're really strong and you can go ahead and you can break these apart and it's a quick change for your blade selection. So that way you don't have to make a uh, hundred different uh, crawler harnesses. You can simply just change out uh, blades on the fly. And then the last thing you'll need here, guys, is this swivel. So depending upon what you guys want to do um, and how you guys want to run it, you're going to take your, your crawler harness, right? And this is the one with the treble hook and the size two. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run six beads. Um, and you guys can set up your own color patterns, you know, uh, as best you want them. I know up here in Michigan, uh, a lot of guys like the pinks, the, um, 
the purples work really well, uh, blues and greens. Um, and then you'll find those offshoot days where, you know, some of your blacks, some uh, clears will work, work good. Um, but I'm just gonna do a simple um, blue and white setup today. So I ran three blues, I'm gonna do three whites, and then I'm gonna put one of these um, clevises on. And then these Dutch forks are, are again, they're really nice. You wanna make sure that the, uh, the swivel end of this is at the top of it, um, or otherwise it'll get your, uh, your blade spun up and hung up on your stuff. So we'll do that. And as a buffer, what I'll do is I'll run two plastic beads at the top um, and down, all right? So what you guys will see here is um, your treble hook, your number two, and then I got those six glass beads. It's gonna bang together nicely so they attract the fish. I've got that Dutch fork clevis, and then I've got two beads up top, all right? And then how we're gonna finish this off is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach a number three swivel. Um, again, personal preference, whatever you guys wanna use. These are just some cheap Bass Pro swivels. Um, honestly, I, I find that the walleye don't really um, pull that hard um, and you don't, I've never had a problem with them, put it that way. And if I did, I guess I would, I would probably either bump up to a size two or just go ahead and, and maybe go with a better manufactured product. Uh, but again, I'm throwing that polymer knot onto it and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim my tag end. All right, and so you have your main line coming up to say a bottom bouncer or whatever you guys are using to present this. Um, and then it goes down, right? And it goes down to those two plastic beads up on top. Whatever clevis you decide to go with, um, your front hook and then whatever rear hook you have. So that's how it kind of presents itself, all right? And then from there, um, all we have to do is we can switch out our boxes. So from there, guys, what we need to do is we need to decide what kind of blades we're gonna run. All right, and what I mean by that, there's many different size blades. Um, some of my favorite, as you can see, are these Colorado blades. There's a lot of manufacturers of these things um, and a lot of different sizes. I run a size four, a size five, or a size six blade. Um, I like all my blades to be this text pattern blades, um, and it really reflects the light very, very well. Um, it's called that hammered blade, um, and they're mostly Colorado deep cut blades that I run. I do have a couple of tomahawks down here, um, and I'll be honest, I don't fish much of them. Um, but what you want is that hammered Colorado deep cut blade. Um, some of the blades even are painted on the backside in this purple. I have a couple that are in the antifreeze pattern. Um, it's really up to you guys, you know, the more arsenals in your toolbox, the better for, uh, you know, every different condition. Whatever blade you decide to put on, you're just gonna take um, these Dutch fork clevises, you're gonna pop it right down, and then all you're gonna do is clasp it. And this is ready to have a nut crawler thrown on it and be fished. The other thing I wanna point out is making sure that whatever blade that you do run, that it doesn't interfere with this front hook, all right? So right there we can see that if a fish does hit this thing, it's not gonna hit this blade as it's spinning, all right? That, front hook is free. And that's really what's gonna determine how many beads you guys put on these things. Uh, so just keep in mind what your biggest blade is that you may be running and always put enough bead space in there so that your front hook is not blocked uh, if a walleye does decide to hit that front hook. Plano makes this really nice box, guys. Uh, it comes with these things. I believe there is uh, 18 of these in each box. So I like to run two on each side. You can run them with or without the, um, the blades on them. I usually try uh, to take my blades off and I've, I've just got a, a Plano 3700 box that I cut some um, foam into from Hobby Lobby to keep my blades kind of nice and stop from getting nicked up. Um, this is all I've done for that. Um, and then my storage solutions for the actual crawler harness themselves 
is I'll, whenever I get done fishing um, with that particular harness, I'll just go ahead and I will put my rear hook, whatever it may be, um, onto that. And I'll just go ahead and I will wrap um, this up. And it's a really nice product. Um, I have not gotten too many tangles out of it. Um, the ones that I do are, are really easy to correct. And then they have these little slots in there that lock your line in place. Um, so you can just go ahead, put them in there, and then pull them out as necessary to change um, you know, the different colors. Uh, like I said, I like to run some different colors. You'll see some pinks, some darks, um, some clears um, in here, some greens, um, and a little bit of blue. And that'll basically get you through any type of situation um, you encounter out there on the water. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, a little uh, intro introduction to tying your own crawler harnesses. I hope I've given you some good information, some good ideas, uh, ways to store, ways to uh, improve upon maybe your own type of crawler harnesses. Um, and as always, guys, uh, if you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button. If you like my content and wish to see future content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, uh, tight lines, make a Chris out.